with internal medicine, so much of what we do is trying to figure out why a dog or cat is sick. Uh, in Similar to uh, pediatricians in human medicine, uh, you don't know why the baby's crying. We don't know a lot of these cases why these dogs and cats are sick, and I was always drawn to the challenge, uh, the diagnostic challenge. How, can, why is this dog or cat ill, and what, what do we have to do to find it out so we can find the best way to treat it? We do uh, have all the different types of rigid scopes and uh, flexible scopes. We uh, use CT a lot to help identify respiratory diseases, uh, nasal diseases. Uh, because a lot of times, again, and since animals can't talk, it's, it's literally you, you have to use your diagnostic tools, but you want to use it wisely because a lot of times these procedures that, that um, require anesthesia, and you want to explain to the owner why you're putting the pet under an anesthesia. The primary tools that uh, we use in internal medicine, uh, the ultrasound is certainly our number one tool. Uh, we do both, we, we'll ultrasound just about anything, but the majority of our, our, our ultrasounds are done on the canine and feline abdomens. Uh, for numerous uh, abdominal conditions. Uh, we also do quite a fair amount of cardiac and thoracic imaging for heart and pulmonary conditions. I think internal medicine could be a little bit tricky because some of the chronic illnesses that we don't have a cure for, but we can still enhance the, the quality. So I do feel that that's always very satisfying where we just made the pet happier, which then makes the owner happier. We do a lot of diagnostics where we look at blood work and how do we interpret the blood work and also we need further diagnostics such as ultrasound, CT, uh, scopings. And so I do think internal medicine is a very broad uh, category because when you think about other specialties, they kind of focus on one organ system and uh, except for surgery, they will just uh, do surgical procedures. But ultimately with internal medicine, it it's really uh, deals with not just organs, but also the hormones and the different chemicals in our body that all are kind of trying to be in balance so that we're healthy. One of the big questions I always get as an oncologist is why do dogs and cats develop cancer? And is it a common thing? It's always surprising when I, when I answer that question to this day because most folks don't realize how common cancer is in our pets. The average statistics are very striking, and that is, is that about 48 to 50 percent of dogs will develop some type of malignant cancer by the time they're 10 years of age. My goal when I meet with anyone who comes into the clinic and in our initial consultation is really to learn as much as I can about what that pet is suffering from and really what the goals of the, the owners are 